a few weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago, I did a video and I went out to the Lake District and shot with two cameras. I shot with my Bronica medium format 120 camera with Ektar and I also shot with my Micro Four Thirds Panasonic G80. And on that trip, I did talk about the similarities and some of the benefits of carrying Micro Four Thirds alongside a film camera. And I said I would do a short video uh, about comparing and showing how I achieved the look of Ektar with Micro Four Thirds. Now, uh, quick disclaimer, you will have different results to me. You will have different cameras. Micro Four Thirds is different to full frame. There are different models of Micro Four Thirds. Your scanner for your film will differ. The way you process your film will differ. So there's no way I can say, here's a preset and you apply this and you'll get the Ektar look. You'll just have to work on them individually yourself to get a, a look that you find pleasing. Right, so let's have a look at some of the images from the trip and also an image from a much earlier trip. So starting off with possibly the one which represents, I would say, the, uh, the most, most similar characteristics between the film and digital is this particular image here. Now on the left we have the uh, Ektar image and on the right we have the Micro Four Thirds. That'll be the same throughout this video. Now I have manipulated the Micro Four Thirds image to look as close as I can reasonably make it to the Ektar image. Now that gives me a very, very similar look in this case. I find them quite comparable. Um, yeah, I actually do like the look of the, the digital image alongside the film in this one. It's particularly close. But when you start to actually look into some of the, the detail of the image, uh, I mean, detail levels are comparable again. They've both been scaled to be the same size. I do find some differences. Now those differences are partly down to things like depth of field. There is more depth of field in Micro Four Thirds, so you have a, a softened background with the film image. But I do find the, the rendering of the colors uh, quite different when you get close up. The, the warmer colors, these, these uh, browns within the scene are quite different on the Ektar shot on the left. They are more separated to my eye and it may be difficult to see on the video but there is more, there's a greater difference between the, the, the warm tones within the Ektar image. They are more, more three-dimensional. And you'll hear that mentioned a lot when people talk about film, but they are more separated. They are, they are less flat than the digital image. And also here, if you look into this particular tree trunk, which is moss covered, the tree trunk on the digital image is sort of a uniform green color. There isn't very much uh, difference in tone or color in there. On the film image, however, there are a lot more warm tones showing through in the moss. It, it's quite different to my eye. And that produces, again, uh, a feeling of depth within the image. The, the digital image is very good. It is very sharp, but it is a bit more uniform. It's a little bit more, a bit more, a bit more digital, obviously. So, in that particular instance, it's very, very close. And I would say that if you were printing them, you wouldn't really see much difference. But I have a preference for that, that slightly three dimensional look I'm getting from film. And that is because of the way I have separation within some of the very similar tones, which the digital camera in this case hasn't captured quite so well, although it is, it is a very, very good uh, approximation. Now, looking at this other image, now this one is from the end of the day on the shoot and the digital image on the right, uh, film image on the left again. Now, a little bit of mist had rolled in onto the digital image, so that has softened it. So that's not really fair to compare that part of the image. But the rest of the image is, is very, very similar again. However, just as before, there is a different rendering of tones. Now, you could argue here that the actual digital image has made a nicer job of the trees. There is a bit more color in there. Yes, you could put more color into either of these images, but as you know, when you mess about with sliders and the like and saturation and various hues, uh, the, the tonality of the whole image can change. You really need to get into some quite sophisticated processing if you want to avoid that in your images, it, covering the whole image. You need to be more selective in the way you edit it. But I do find again that the film image for me has a more separated look. Now I can crank the clarity up on the digital image to provide that separation, but then it becomes a little bit more unnatural to my eye. Now, I'm not saying that, that this means film is superior. It certainly isn't superior. I'm saying that it is a look that I prefer. And this, this is why it goes to explain why I shoot film. I prefer the look of film. I don't dislike digital. 
it does a great job it, it the technology is fantastic it's so much more convenient it's cheaper um you know low light shooting handheld etc vastly superior to film but i prefer the way the film image looks again the the digital image to me looks more two-dimensional these trees seem to sort of they don't seem to be separated from the background and that's nothing to do with depth of field here these these are many miles away so everything is in focus but with the film image I, I have a greater separation of tones I feel that the tonality is superior although I would admit that the colors are very very nice on this Panasonic image I'd probably prefer the trees on the Panasonic image overall but the separation is is what I'm, I'm loving on the film image but again personal preference now the third image was taken about, ooh, about five years ago uh, and this is comparing a an Olympus EM5 Mark I uh, alongside Ektar on the left again. So this is very very similar time of day that some of the clouds have moved across. Now I had to correct the uh, digital image and make it more cyan. Ektar sadly is quite cyan in the skies. It's not a very nice look I'll be honest. But it is superb in terms of the warm tones. Obviously, it's known for it. You know, it's a Kodak film. Um, again, the 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 colours are different. The digital image has captured an awful lot of detail, and I have sharpened them both to, uh, comparably. Um, and it is an awful lot of detail in the trees. Again, the Ektar has done a very good job in there as well. But again, the Ektar for me has greater separation and more natural colours. I would say this this tree here and the foliage looks to my eye a bit more natural than the the micro four thirds image and again it's personal preference uh, somebody may say the micro four thirds image has excellent color and it does and it's also got excellent detail again but that's not what we're discussing we're talking here about the ability to make micro four thirds look like like film and you can you can get close but i'm not somebody who's going to spend an awful lot of time an effort trying to make a digital image look like a film one. I'm going to go and shoot film. But what I'm saying is if you want to put that time and effort in and if you know far more about Photoshop, Lightroom and um, you know using film presets, you could probably get a very, very close approximation to that film look. So if you want to get a film look and you, you only shoot digital, you can do it. I mean, Fuji do a fantastic job with their in-camera JPEGs on the uh, X series cameras, absolutely superb. I mean, some people argue they're better than the raw files. It's done all the work for you. Years and years of experience from Fuji, they know what they're talking about. But for me, again, you know, in this image here, I prefer the the way the colors are separated. It's more of a uniform color on the right on the Micro Four Thirds image. There is more separation on the film image. Now this obviously, as I'll say it again, will vary tremendously based on your particular scanning technique it will vary on your camera your lenses your digital camera your post processing there is no way that you can have um, a one size fits all for this so you will have your own unique way of doing things so uh, I'm personally uh, would not be spending much time doing that if I shoot digitally I would use the advantages of digital and I would make the image look as good as it could without having to try and make it emulate film film is a completely different medium it has a different look. Uh, I don't shoot film because I want a digital look and vice versa, I don't shoot digital to get a film look. But if you want to, you can definitely get close as hopefully you've seen on this video. So yes, in conclusion, I won't be trying to make my uh, digital images look more film-like because I like shooting film. However, it can be done. And yes, there are very, very many ways of doing it far more successfully than I've shown you here. But yes, next trip will be with film. Uh, digital is largely consigned to uh, video for me and also those really early morning shoots when it, it's got massive advantages over film photography. So thank you for uh, coming along and looking at this quick comparison and I'll see you on the next trip.